Welcome to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 325 of the Super Speedway podcast, recorded Tuesday, June 18th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, I'm getting old. It's hard to see the little text on my screens. <laughs> Things are too far away. I have I reading gonna... glasses, but I, I'm not willing to wear them. I was just going to say, I feel like uh, I feel like we're both a little tired tonight. Yeah. Like old age is... is uh... Setting in. Well, I don't know. I had the day off today, so if I'm tired, it's because I got too much rest today. So, well, you're always going. So, yeah, not 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 according to my Apple Fitness or Apple Health app that just told me today that my physical activity is down significantly over the last five days. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> time to get back on the move again. But yeah, I'll probably do, a good thing. I'm yeah. doing that Saturday. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I canceled my couple of vacation days last week i'm not happy about it yeah 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 that always sucks to cancel vacation days <sighs> yeah. you, don't, you don't get enough life. you know it's not the life i want to live i want every day to be a vacation day see i didn't take a vacation day i'm off for juneteenth which is tomorrow but i took today off instead of tomorrow and then ah. and then tomorrow i'll be the only one working so it'll be a nice easy day that's actually a brilliant brilliant well, strategy i would have had to work tomorrow anyway so because i have to finish everything up so i'm like right. well if i'm gonna have to work tomorrow anyway i might as well work tomorrow and just right. take the day off so that's what i did right. yeah good yeah that's and then, that's the best and then tomorrow afternoon i'm driving south down to owasso speedway to watch some late models so fantastic see and yeah, try and weather 90 degree heat in the grandstands and it's gonna be great it's supposed to break by Saturday, isn't it? No, not tomorrow night, though. Tomorrow oh night God. is supposed to be hot. So, uh, speaking of being active, yeah, this is where uh, Ryan Blaney won this weekend. By the way, um, no, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll I get there. Go, we'll get there, guys. I tried to go running on Monday in the in the heat, uh, <sighs> and I was feeling okay the first three miles, and then uh, I got to mile four, and it was noon. And that's when the temperature shot up into the 90s. Uh -huh. And also, I didn't feel very good. Yeah. And I said, I, yeah. And my, my watch has a heart rate monitor on it. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, it went from the 130s to the 150s, and it was climbing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop. Yeah. I'm going to stop. Good. I think I'm going to stop today and not die. Good Although call. I felt pretty good. Good call. But, you know, yeah. This, you, heat's, this heat's wild up here this week. When you said you got to the third mile, I went um, 30 feet. Out my yeah. the war door at work to my car, yeah, and thought I was gonna die. So <laughs> it's bad out there. It's hot. It's humid. Just that I, I, we've been trying to finish get our camper ready for the season here, and uh, tonight finally the heat slowed down just enough. We could get a couple of things done. I had the kids outside playing, but it's still <laughs> it's bad. I was I was out there and I started sweating immediately. You know, I was like, no, I'm going to bed early tonight. Yeah, this, this house that I have now is the first house I've owned that has central air. And oh. it is the most wonderful thing in the history of the world. Yeah, see? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Lots yeah, of window units now. before that. I had central air when I lived with my parents. But when I got my own place, we had window units. And Well, I take that back. The first year we rented a place, we had central air. Uh, but after that, we had window units. And No thanks, man. No thanks. No, no you got to have mine's Mine's right out my window right now cranking. So you gotta yep. have central air. Minus heat. minus two, and I still got a fan blowing on me right now. Oh, god. But uh, yeah, it was it was hot in Iowa this weekend too, James. Hot enough to blister some tires in the Xfinity race, uh, and uh, we raced at night in the Cup Series. And you already mentioned Ryan Blaney gets the win in the Iowa Corn <laughs> Three Fifty. Um, lots of corn this weekend. Plenty of corn. A lot of corn growing, knee high. Yeah, I saw that. I saw a few of those. Yep. Yeah, the uh, the infield of dreams at uh, uh, Iowa Speedway. Um, I, I think let's, I, 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 I want to pat myself on the back, James, because I, I have been calling for a race at this track for so long. Yes. We finally got one and boy, was it spectacular. It was great. It was a good show. What a great show race. 91% yep. on Jeff Gluck's pole, I believe. Yep. In that range. Yep. It's amazing what you can do when Goodyear finally feels the pressure to start putting together decent tires. Yeah. And, and you know, the other thing is, is boy, can we end the narrative on repaves are bad? Because the last three repaves we've raced on have been awesome. I love the, uh, 
I love the fact that the track went from rough to flat smooth through yeah. the corners. The Frankensteining that. that they did is awesome. I hope they yeah. don't fix it. Yeah, leave it alone. Don't touch there's, it. There's absolutely no reason to put more money into the surface of that track right now. Yeah, and there's like seams that make the cars hard to drive. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it was. Don't listen to Christopher Bell. Don't fix it. <laughs> that looked like a NASCAR short track. Yeah. That that was good. That was good enough. Like if we if we did that every time we went to a short track, I'd be perfectly pleased. I you know maybe it's NBC's coverage. Well, that too. But I don't recall a lap where there wasn't at least a side by side battle somewhere. And somebody's sideways. Yeah, I mean it was just good, good racing, great racetrack. I hope it stays on the schedule. I would. I, I gotta imagine it's going to at this point. NASCAR is gonna look pretty foolish if they take it off. Especially if we get rid of Richmond. I mean, this certainly can replace a Richmond date. Um, can it replace a Phoenix date? Yeah. It's too bad we can't race here in November, right? Yeah. <laughs> or February. Yeah. <laughs> or March or whatever the heck. I mean, yeah. it'd be a little chilly to run a playoff race here, probably. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I don't know. November? It's early November. You might be able to... Harvest is on. Maybe I'll <laughs> squeeze one. Maybe I'll yeah. squeeze one out the first weekend of November. Let me tell you, as a, as a, someone who's hunted the cornfields of Michigan, uh, November is not so bad out there. I the corn. You know, I my birthday is on November 11th, and I've worn short sleeves on my birthday many times. I've also yeah. worn winter coats on my birthday, but <laughs> that's beside the point. Yeah. We could race out there. <laughs> Tires might not uh, blister as much. Yeah, we whatever. probably won't have to worry about blistering then. Um, yeah. so Ryan Blaney gets a win. Uh, it feels like he already did that this year, but he hasn't. Um, so gets his win, locks himself into the playoffs. Um, home track for Blaney, right? 200 laps, 200 laps led man. That was, yeah, I saw, um, I saw a stat where he's one of 10 active drivers in the cup series who've, who've ever led 200 laps in a race. Nice. I, di- I didn't know that it well, was that I mean, small of a list. If but. you think about it, how many tracks do we race 200 laps at though? Well, yeah, that's because yeah. because Michigan, if you, track, if you lead right? more than 200 laps at Michigan, you've you can't. You know, it has to go you've into led, overtime. Yeah, you've led the entire race and overtime. Daytona yeah. is is 200 and one whatever 150, I think. Yeah, it's got to be like at Talladega is 188. Bristol, Rich, yeah, Bristol, Richmond. It's got to be um, a short track. Well, Charlotte, it can be Charlotte, 600. That's true. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's uh, it's tough to do. But yeah, that I thought that was a pretty cool stat. Um, yeah, not to take anything away from the stat, it's definitely a cool stat. I don't. He's know also if he was the he's best. also the first driver to win in all three series at Iowa. Yeah, did that. <laughs> he definitely did that. Um, and he, won in front of his family. Yeah, which was you know covered very well. Yeah, definitely covered very well. Rivaled the coverage of Hen- Hendrick's uh, anniversary at Martinsville earlier this year. So. It's good, to, Dave, good to see NBC playing safer, that. Dave popped out of the safer barrier. Yeah. At one point. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Pretty funny. Um, <laughs> so, do you yeah. think he you did think, a burnout? Do you think he uh, is delivering like an edible arrangement to uh, Daniel Suarez uh, after this race for the win? Because he <laughs> might want to. Um, yeah, he might want to. Who? Well, that was one of the questions I had. Yeah. For you, Eric, was so everybody's back and forth on. Whose fault was it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've gone back and forth myself. Like, at first, I'm like, well, no, Suarez lost control of his race car and it caused a wreck. And then I thought, well, Larson was faster than everybody by a mile. Why was he sticking it in there? And then I thought, well, that's what Kyle Larson does. Right. <laughs> he's always he's always going to be, you know, ultra aggressive. So I don't know if uh, if it was just Suarez's fault for slipping or what, but yeah, that that well, changed the entire complexion of the race. Yeah, for sure. Af- after the weird pit call where they brought him in for a flat tire that wasn't flat, right? So, yeah, well, so um, I I was kind of bouncing around through this race. I I started it delayed and was trying to catch yep, up, yep. so I I skipped some stuff, a lot of the pit stop stuff. So what happened? They they said that the 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 lettering was worn off the tires. Larson said he didn't hit the wall but they were afraid that the tires were down because of that. So they pitted to be safe. Is yeah. That... Yep. They pitted gotcha. to be safe. And uh, they looked at the tire and said, no, nah, you just, you scuffed it, but it's not, it's hmm. not down. And so Larson was kind of sarcastically like, great. <laughs> uh, but I thought it was entertaining as hell when Larson restarted 32nd 
and was just flying through the field. So I don't want to hear anybody say you can't pass on a short track anymore no. because if you, put, if you put the fastest car in the back of the field and he can fly through like that, he ended up going all the way to, I think, fifth, uh, fourth or fifth before the next caution came out. And then, you know, then his race was was toast. Well, I uh, said it. I said it last week that the, the one driver you never hear complain about not being able to pass is Kyle Larson. Oh, yeah. He's got no reason to. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, so to, to go back to the Suarez thing, I have two points yep. to make on this. Yep. First of all, coming from a former race director, who hit who? Suarez hit Larson. Then there you go. There's there's <laughs> who's at fault. Suarez, you, don't dis- you don't disagree, right? I mean, it's Suarez. No, Suarez is at fault. Suarez made the mistake that caused the wreck. You you can't blame Larson for making it three wide. They I mean, they were three wide all race long. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to try and pass people. Well, if and, if, and, you know, if if Suarez wouldn't have gotten loose and gotten into Larson, Larson wouldn't have wrecked. So it's right. it's Suarez's fault. Did Suarez do it on purpose? No, of course not. But Suarez no, he made the lost mistake. Of his race car. Yeah. yeah, Suarez made the mistake. I don't think Larson was upset about it. It happened. It's you put yourself in that position. So that stuff happens. It's a short track. That's those things will happen. But if if we had a caution car in NASCAR, Suarez would be going to the back. The yeah. other thing I'd say, James, is that. This was inevitable anyway, because yeah. Kyle Larson tried to wreck himself multiple times in this race. <laughs> yeah. He yeah, pinched he so did. many people off of turn two on the backstretch. Well, he was driving. <laughs> he, here's the thing with Kyle Larson, too, that we always have to make sure we keep in the back of our mind. He has supreme confidence. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a multiple, you know, it's like a it's. He has confidence for many good reasons. Right. One, he's probably the best wheelman in all of racing. I don't think there's a probably, James. I think everybody's pretty universal on the fact that he's yeah. the best driver and, there right now. Yeah, and then also he's got the best stuff, and his him and his crew chief, they're just like on the same page all mm-hmm. the time for the most part. I mean, he's – and that's my thing too, like – Nine times out of ten, if a driver beats another driver into and through a corner, he's definitely not the problem. Right. Um, unless he blows up somebody at, at eventually. But, you know, Larson got, got a nose out in front of Suarez clean. I mean, that was, uh, again, but Larson, th- this does get him into trouble. And yeah. this is where, you know the format that NASCAR has now kind of plays into his favor. Cause he can do, he can get away with crap like this yep. throughout the regular season, but it's also gotten him in trouble in yeah. the playoffs. Yeah. Again, uh, if, it, if it happens at the wrong time, it happens at Phoenix, it's, it's a problem. Well, you remember, you remember Texas, uh, what was it? Two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he, no, it was last year. Wasn't it last year, Texas, either last year or the year before. It doesn't matter. Um, he almost got eliminated from the playoffs after having the best car at Texas, just because he was, you know, um, being overly aggressive when he didn't need to be. And that's the thing with Larson. Do you want him to back it down and be conservative and get to the end of the race? Or do you want him to be himself? And you want him to be himself. That's what makes him so great as a, as a sprint car driver. And if Um, that's the case, he's going to wreck every once in a while. Yeah, exactly. He is. That's what he does. Kyle Larson is Jimmy Johnson without the finesse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. You know, Jeremy, Jimmy never made a mistake. You never saw him. Not very often. It was very rare that he tore a car up. Larson tears a lot of cars up, but he wins more because of that and yeah. if you if you try to back down larson you're gonna ruin larson you have to let him do what he's doing you have to let him take those risks you have because as you said he's got supreme confidence in himself um and we saw we saw world of outlaws kyle larson at iowa knoxville. you know yeah. i mean yeah. that he was in knoxville you yeah. know the night before so. right yeah so he still yeah. had that mindset <laughs> yeah and and you know that's that's the thing with that team and that's you know, I know he didn't have the the finish in this race, but I mean, they really are separating themselves as the as the championship contending team now. The problem um, is, is that with this format, you never know. It doesn't matter because yeah. it's one race, and yeah. that I guess is the plus for this format. It sucks because Kyle Larson probably should win the championship about every other year right now, the way he is. Yeah. Um, but that's not the format we have, and because of that we won't know who the champion is going to be until after Phoenix period. Well, and that's the other, and, and that's, and I'm glad we're talking about this because it's one thing I did want to touch on with Blaney. It's uh, the Fords, like the stallions are, are awakening. Yeah. <laughs> Those Mustangs, 
those Mustangs are getting stronger and stronger every week. It seems like. Yeah. And they're also getting uh, stronger on tracks that are very similar to the championship race. Yeah. And I would venture to guess the Fords going into New Hampshire this week are going to be a problem again. Mm-hmm. Um, the Penske's are going to, the Penske guys, the, you know, the RFK guys and, and you know, even the Stuart Haas cars, you know, all jokes aside, Josh Berry, there was a time during this race where Josh Berry was looking like he, he could get away with this one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the Fords definitely have something cooking. The Toyotas seem to be stagnant a little bit. So it's kind of like Larson versus the Fords here, um, right now. And then Chase Elliott's in the, in the mix too. But, but yeah, um, you know, Logano kind of the low man on the totem pole at Penske now with, uh, <laughs> with Cendric and Blaney getting wins here the last uh, three weeks. But, um, you know, we knew Blaney was going to make the playoffs. That, that team has just been really good this season. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I, you know, I'm glad you brought that point up because yeah, Larson looks like the favorite, but I don't know, man, somebody out of that Ford camp's going to come and they're going to be a problem too. Yeah. So here we just spent, you know, 20 minutes talking about Larson and <laughs> we spent what? Well, 10 seconds talking about Blaney um, <laughs> and the weather. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, interesting race for sure. Um, certainly, I mean, I, I, again, I would say that, you know, here's a, here's 200 laps led out of a 350 lap race, but it didn't feel like a domination. I mean, honestly, it felt like Larson dominated more than Blaney did, even though Larson yeah. only led 80 laps. But I mean, I guess that's because those two led almost all the laps, but still, yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the racing behind the leader was excellent. Lots of passing, lots of three wide. Every restart was insane. Um, yep. the track, the, the new pavement was wide enough that, you could get you could fit three cars and still have breathing room, um, which was great. But uh, yeah, overall, just uh, very interesting. Um, William Byron quietly gets himself a second place finish, sneaking up on Blaney at the end, chasing yeah, him down. He, yeah, he needed that. Yeah, um, he's had he's kind of had one of those William Byron um, you know, slumps. He, yeah, like a I don't know what that, that slumps probably the best way to talk about it. He comes and goes. Yeah. Um, he gets hot and then he cools it down and then he gets hot and cools it down. And right, right now he's kind of, he's had fast race cars, but not the best luck. And then, you know, you don't hear from him for a couple of races. So yeah, that was probably a good showing for him. Um, I saw this stat too. Ryan Blaney has 11 career wins, uh, four second place finishes for William Byron in those 11 wins. Interesting. Yeah. I thought that was another interesting, uh, stat i'm not sure why they find each other out there but um yeah getting close getting close to 50 percent when you've got that total we've uh we spent a lot of the season talking about william byron we spent a lot of the season talking about kyle larson we spent a good chunk of the season talking about ryan blaney but what about all three third place here this weekend chase elliott once again yeah. strong yep. performance he's doing yeah, what he needs to do right now putting together a good season he's the uh, best average finish in the series right now and the points leader now yeah um so yeah he's i'd say he's probably a step behind larson but yeah. um this is what he does man this has been the difference is, is that career. larson's inconsistent and chase is consistent yeah chase doesn't rack up the wins at this point but this is this is his whole career man chase mm-hmm. Elliott, you look at his racing reference page and you're gonna see a lot of seasons with 20 plus top 10 finishes yeah you know, and, and even last year where he missed seven races, um, he missed seven races and still had 15 top tens. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what that's what Chase Elliott does, man. He's just always around, um, may not have the winning car, may not lead the most laps, but he's going to, you know, he's going to get through the day and, and get through. And that's kind of how he won his championship, too. He was, you know, um, just a strong season and and showed up when it mattered. And that's that's kind of how he rolls. Um, Christopher Bell complained about the track. We got a fourth place finish. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Fifth place finish. Top five for Ricky. We should have seen that one coming. Yeah. He's yeah. He's got a lot been, of lot of uh, success yeah. here. Yeah, he's had a lot of Iowa success, and all of a sudden I saw him lead, leading a couple of laps. I'm like, holy cow, Stenhouse, he's up there. No. Uh, Josh Berry, seventh place finish. Strong day. Uh, fifth and second in the first two stages. Led 32 laps. I thought Eric at one point, I mean, I, when he got the lead at that, uh, um, when he, when he did, I was like, holy yeah. cow, I think, I think Josh Berry could win this race. And then, you know, Blaine took over. But, right. Yeah. But, when, yeah, that, when Larson went out, I'm like, Ooh, this might have just turned the right direction for Josh Berry. Yeah. 
But. Yeah, I thought for sure he might have a shot at it. They 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 might not be out of the. They might not. They might not be done yet. We might hear from Josh Berry again here um, before the season's out. Uh, Todd Gillen has announced that he's continuing on at the 38 car. Uh, 12th place finish for him. Another one really strong. He had one point to, during the day. He looked like he'd be a contender. He's always around. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, we've talked he, about that multiple times on the show. He is just, Todd Gillen's just around. He went from basically having his car taken away to the top performing car at Front Row. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is. Yep. It's, it's incredible. And uh, yep. just, Justin Haley, 13th place finish for him. He was uh, in the top 10 for a long time, too. Yeah, great run for Rick Ware Racing. Yeah, um, uh, stage point in stage two. He got he was, he was up there. Yeah. Uh, Noah Gregson ran well um, on the weekend, but didn't get the finish out of it. 16th place finish was involved in one of the uh, cautions that may not have been a caution, but probably yeah. should have been a caution. Um, but uh, yeah, strong in practice, fastest in practice for Noah, uh, but didn't get the qualifying set, qualifying done. And that kind of cost him throughout the day. So, yeah. And some of the Stuart Haas cars did look fast. Like Chase Briscoe looked fast at one point too, in this race um, and over the weekend, just not, didn't get the finish or didn't have the race results that they wanted, but um, signs of life still in that organization for a little bit longer, I think. Uh, you know a car who wasn't fast? Denny, yeah, I know which one you're talking Denny about. Denny Hamlin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what garbage was that thing off the I truck? don't know. <laughs> but when they pit strategied him into the top 10, that's when he got wiped out with Larson. So, yeah, but interesting uh, to see what he could have done up front. He didn't have anything. He's, I, he claims that he was he was much better, so... Ah, he, he, okay, supposed, he went forward on the run before it. Yeah, Dennis. Okay. He was getting <laughs> laughed all day. He was getting laughed all day. I don't, I never saw one bit of strength out of that car. He got a lap down in like 25 laps. Oh, he was bad. Was so really bad. bad. Speaking of bad though, KFB, yeah. uh, Kyle Busch. Um, They're in a free fall right now. Yeah. He's had a weird week again. Um, We'll talk about him in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just looking at his numbers really quick. Um, this is the worst he's been now, this stretch. Well, it's the longest, it's, it's the longest losing streak he's ever been a part of. Yeah, and his since Darlington. So Darlington, he's gone 27th, 15th, 35th, 12th, 35th. Yeah. Two DNFs in that stretch. That's rough. And that 12th would have been a fifth, um, but chastained. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chastain him right out of the top 10. <laughs> uh, so, ah, uh, yeah, this is the worst stretch of his, probably his career right now. The only one who might have had a worse weekend is AJ Allmendinger who tried to knock the wall down twice. Yeah, a lot of tire issues for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the tire issues in this race. James, we saw some. Uh, it wasn't Bristol-esque. Uh, it wasn't Indianapolis-esque. Uh, good with what we saw in this one? Heck yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I, yeah, I think we need more. Tire. I think we need more wear on the left side. It's obviously 130 some laps on the left sides for Ryan Blaney at the end. Um, yeah. That we need something better there, but we're going in the right direction. At a 350 lap race and the tires on the right side were really struggling after about 100, what, 100 laps? Yeah, about 90 to 100 laps. It was That's about perfect. pretty good. Yep. That's what you want. Yeah, maybe That's even a little want. less. You might, might be able to even take a little bit more off of them. Uh, you know. We've been screaming and kicking and crying for a good year to do something for so long. The fact that we've got signs of life, I'm yeah. actually not even going to comment. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> I win. I am completely satisfied <laughs> with what Goodyear's got going on right now. I hope they have another good showing at uh, um, at New Hampshire this week. I know they're changing the compound a little bit uh, going into New Hampshire, but I, yeah, I'm hopeful. Hopefully we'll have another good run um, this week. There you go. Uh, anything else with the cup race at Iowa that's worth mentioning before we look at Xfinity. Yeah. Don't take it off the schedule. Come back. Yeah, Definitely. Definitely come back. Um, yeah. You know what Great place. else I saw Eric besides the good racing, which I think we were all on board for good racing. Um, remember when the, when the draft was in Detroit. Yeah. And remember when the lions were really good over the, not, not that, not that long ago. Right. Oh, what a, what a time to be alive. Um, but Michigan fans were starving for some sort of success. Heck, even the Michigan football team, I'll even throw them in there, even though I don't want to. Yeah. Um, but remember, the draft comes into town and just 
attendance is crazy. People are going nuts. They just want high quality sporting things in their city. And every time NBC zoomed in from from on high at that racetrack, that's what that reminded me of. Yeah. Those fans showed out because NASCAR major sports were in their were in their backyard. And that that's a that's an area of the country that really will show up for you. And that's that's what I saw. And I I hope we continue to reward them for it because that was really good. Yeah, it definitely, definitely looked. I mean, it was packed and it was packed Saturday, too. Um, I mean, it was it was great to see that sort of um, that sort of response from NASCAR fans. I I mean, Brett Griffin mentioned it on Door Bumper Clear this week that like there name another sport that can build a racetrack in the middle of or build an, a, an a event center in the middle of freaking nowhere and their yeah. fans will show up. I mean, yep. this is in the middle. If you look at the map, I mean, it's on a highway on the way to places, but it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of a cornfield. Yep. Um, you know, Michigan's in the middle of nowhere. It um, is. Kentucky's yep. in the middle of nowhere. Like we, they Darlington. build these tracks. Yeah. Darlington's in the middle of nowhere. These, these tracks out in Pocono. Yeah. Um, shoot. You want to leave the NASCAR series look at eldora i mean eldora is in the middle of freaking nowhere <laughs> yeah eldora is yeah and and yeah. they pack the place i mean it's they it, just absolutely amazing race fans yeah race fans they want to see a show and you know iowa kudos to iowa and everybody involved with that track for all these years and you know the indycar series they've they started to build something there with the indycar and making it more of an event nascar didn't uh, so much need the event as they just needed the show bring the show to town and and we'll support you um and it was just cool to see man it was it was like a fever pitch out there from what i could see on tv i was really happy for him to see that that excitement the only other thing i will say though is that yes it looks full because there's only about twenty five thousand well, yeah. seats in the, yeah. at the place and that's all you need, though. Exactly. That's, I mean, we don't honestly we don't need two hundred thousand people in the grandstands anymore. Um, Fifty thousand max ish, except for the big, you know, except if, for the big ones. If we wouldn't have taken the tracks that we did and built them up to the level that we did, and then t- when when the when we were, you know, popular because we were the cool thing to do, nobody would even complain about attendance right now. Nobody would even acknowledge the fact that attendance yeah. is down. It's just because yeah. we tried to accommodate the people that w- that wanted to be here, and now they don't anymore. But it's still a huge crowd. I mean, twenty four thousand people is a good crowd. Yeah, and I, and I think that I think that sentiment's starting to fade away. Yeah, um, I think people are like, you know, this is is what it is now. We're we're settled in to to comfort. Yeah. Did you see? Speaking of attendance and, and seats, mm-hmm. sidebar. Uh, this was making the rounds on Twitter. I should have sent this to you. There were plans. Um, and they, somebody had the, somebody had the blueprint on this, um, and shared it on, on the Twitter, uh, Chicago land at one time was considering grant making grandstands go all the way around that facility. Yeah. I remember Chicago that Chicago land speedway. I was like, I, I had never seen the picture of what that could have looked like. And I was, I was flabbergasted because that's a mile and a half right? <laughs> you know, intermediate with, with well, grandstands all the way around. Michigan that's was nuts. two miles and almost had grandstands all the way around it. Michigan had the backstretch was the only area that yeah. was open. I mean, and, think and they, about if, Daytona, what yeah. Daytona used to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I saw the, the rendering and I was like, it looks like Richmond. <laughs> so many, <laughs> right. So many grandstands around the track, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Um, Ryan Blaney, you mentioned 11th, uh, victory 323 cup series starts um chase uh i'm sorry yeah chase elliott points leader eight points over kyle larson uh josh berry seventh place was your highest finishing rookie at iowa and there you and go there you have it nascar xfinity series was in action the day before the hyvee perks 250 sam Mayer with the win on uh on saturday um i think uh if you wanted to uh if you wanted to praise nbc at all this weekend all you had to do was praise that shot of riley herbst getting out of the car with sam Mayer doing donuts in the background (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) that was artistic that was good stuff good stuff right there yeah Yeah. definitely um what was what was the deal i wanted to ask you about this yeah uh did john hunter 
and Chandler Smith have a disagreement. John Hunter. Nova? John Hunter has run into everybody and everything this year. Okay. He is definitely living up to things you've said in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, I think if John Hunter wasn't running into so much stuff, he might say have some opportunities uh, next year with all the rides opening up or the things changing. But yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere because he's running into too much stuff and pissing off too many people. Yeah, he's kind of rattling, especially when he goes down. It's like he's just not respectful of the um, not respectful of the other guys out there lately. Yeah. Yeah. You would think somebody who, you know, didn't necessarily have the silver spoon. You know, he, he raced some lower funded stuff to start his career. You'd think he'd have a little bit more respect, but yeah, he doesn't, doesn't happen. Doesn't yeah. seem to. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So um, Sam Mayer leads 47 laps on the way to the win. Uh, Chandler Smith really was the dominant car. 131 laps led in this one. Won both first two stages, um, but winds up in eighth place at the end. Um, he was grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is OK. Yeah, it's okay. That's all right. Well, it was hot. It was a hot day. <laughs> yeah, um, we did see tire issues in this one. We saw a lot of hits, a lot of. Oh, AJ. Yeah, yeah. AJ hit a ton. Uh, Justin Allgaier hit pretty hard. Um, oh, that was the clip I was trying to find. I was trying to get a There it find... is. You, you said you were going to figure it out. Yeah, I was going to try and find the clip of AJ uh, talking about having his nuts racked in the, uh, <laughs> in the accident. <laughs> yes. and... Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah talk, talking to laugh. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff, but yeah, AJ uh, never AJ is never short on uh, no pun intended. AJ is never short on uh, on funny things to say. Well, to be yeah. fair, this is this is an inside baseball thing for the for the casual fan that doesn't realize it. Um, nine times out of ten, when the drivers get out of a, out of the car winded after an accident, trying to catch their breath, it's not because they had the wind knocked out of them. It's because <laughs> they have a belt that goes right through the crotch, <laughs> and it hurts. <laughs> Yeah. Corey LaJoy famously when he was on the ground looked like he was in tears after hitting Ryan Newman at Daytona was not because he hit Ryan Newman. It was, it was because, because of lost the air in his chest. That's it was for because sure. of his, the belt between his legs. <laughs> that's enough of that conversation. Yeah, that's, that's how you keep a driver in the seat when they hit at, you know, 20 G's. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> taking us down that road. Well done. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I don't know really what else to talk about this. I think it was a good race. Uh, the tire problems definitely were more of an issue. Um, it was more of an issue. However, you know, I, I have a feeling, James, that some of the hits that we saw had more to do with inexperience than it had to do with there being a major problem. Because I think the, I think the angles on the track, too, from when those tires were going. Yeah, but like even like like some of that. Um, Justin Allgaier said that I, I think he said maybe AJ said, too, they had a warning. They had a lap warning. They knew something was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so maybe lift, <laughs> like, <laughs> give it yeah. a lap. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Justin Allgaier is having one of the weird seasons too. With yeah, he is. A lot of it. I mean, he just can't seem to find, you know, a way around what's going on with whatever <laughs> that team's got going on. Yeah. But yeah, always finds his way into the wall. I, SVG, didn't SVG blow a tire in practice and he was... SVG uh, had a, a bad uh, SVG's weekend rival, AJ Allmendinger's. He wrecked yeah, himself he in both races. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, bummer for him. Uh, definitely. Yeah, he had a nice looking Kubota car that was yeah. going to run on Sunday, and that car was white on, uh, or excuse me, on Saturday, and that car was white when they rolled it out on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> With the backup wrap. So, yeah, that was a bummer. Um, uh, Austin Hill. Cut down tires. Oh, that's well. another one. Yes, uh, fans. Um, fans don't like Austin Hill. No, no, they no. don't. Um, there was lots of cheering going on. Yeah, when he strolled down pit road, we've we've been in the grandstands for drivers getting cheered after crashes. Mm -hmm. uh, that one was up there. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I won't go any further. <laughs> it always on that. be said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else here, James? Before we move on? No. I feel like there's no. more to talk about, the... but it was a good race. Yeah, no, I think we're good. Um, Cole Custer, one point over Chandler Smith for the points lead. Uh, Leland Honeyman, 13th, was your highest finishing rookie. Uh, Sam Mayer we're going to sixth race in 99 NASCAR Xfinity Series starts. Oh, 
and I remembered one more thing. Somebody yeah. called Sheldon Creed an idiot. And I think it was his teammate. Yeah, that's another another Gibbs on Gibbs crime. That's probable. <laughs> that might have been Chandler Smith too. Sounds plausible. If I'm not mistaken. Sounds plausible. I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't. And I and I'm saying this like 50 percent sure, but I do recall Sheldon Creed was getting um, bleeped uh, <laughs> <laughs> over the radio. <laughs> So yeah, the Gibbs the Gibbs contingent was not happy uh, on Saturday. Yeah, but shout out to Sam Mayer, another dub. Um, Keep it going. Here's a story. Sheldon Creed blames uh, John Hunter Nemechek for costing both of them. That's victory. probably why I got my wires crossed. Yeah. yeah, those two were mad at each other, so there that makes go. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. There you go. Yeah, I do remember yeah. them getting together too. Yeah, that probably is what it is. Maybe I dragged Chandler Smith into my problems for no, for blamed or brought him into somebody else's <laughs> problems is what I did. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, there's Iowa Speedway. Like you said, let's go back. Let's do it again. Yeah, good track. Shoot, two races a year out there. Let's cut one Richmond and go back to Iowa. Definitely. There you go. Definitely. Uh, I got some news to talk about this week. James got big news this week. Finally, um, after several years of speculation, Martin Truex Jr. is hanging up the helmet. Uh, he'll retire at the retire from full time racing at the end of the season. Uh, apparently, told NBC later that uh, later in the weekend that maybe as many as ten races next year. Of course, I mean he's got to have somebody field a car for him. So uh, it sounds like he's got a he's got a buddy who can help him with that. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. They, Freddie said, I don't know. He said. Denny's full of crap because he doesn't know where he's getting the car. But, um, yeah, Denny says he's got a car for him anytime he wants to run at 2311. So so everybody is on. So everybody understands Denny just says things. Then. Right. Yeah. It, OK. Well, yeah, that's fine. Including Freddie, who works for him. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. OK. Um, yeah. So let's talk. Martin Tricks Jr. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about MTJ a little bit. He deserves our. Uh, he deserves our attention. Yeah, the man of multiple careers, right? I mean, uh, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he is a, he's two different careers in one, almost three. Because I mean, really, he, he had his career at DEI, left DEI, went to Michael Waltrip Racing, and True. then his True. season, his his career was over. <laughs> like, yeah, he was, yeah, there was one was... place left to go, and he went to Furniture Row and built a dynasty so yeah. good that. Joe Gibbs Racing ran him out of business. Yeah, if um, and I think people forget that if Kurt Busch doesn't resurrect himself yeah. through Furniture Row, and actually that team started to perform under Kurt, um, and it became actually a viable option for Martin. And man, what a what a NASCAR what if if Kurt Busch would have just stuck that out for a little while longer and Martin right. never got that opportunity. But when Martin got in that car and got uh, got hooked up with Cole Pern, um, lightning in a bottle yeah. from 2015 all the way through the end of his career. Uh, he's just been stellar ever since, ever since. Without um, without the next gen cars inter uh, introduction, um we could have we could have seen another Jimmy Johnson slash Chad Knauss because I don't think Cole Pern would have left the sport. Um, yeah, and I think I think Cole Pern left with the writing on the wall for the next gen car and he didn't want to deal with it. Yeah, yep. and Truex not as good without him. I mean, still good, still a great driver, but not as good without him. Yeah, I mean he's um, he had another runner up in the championship standings after that. But yeah. ever since, yeah, he's, he had that winless season in 22 and then last year, three wins um, again, but yeah, he's top five in points right now when you look at it. So he's, you know, he could go out on top if he, yeah. uh, you know, things go right, but we don't, know, we don't have to have the hall of fame discussion with him. He's got a championship. He's, he's got, locked. The, he's got yeah. the, I mean, he's a first ballot, right? Pretty yeah, much. And, I, and, and I've often said he's Dale Jarrett. Yeah. That's the same career as Dale Jarrett. He yep. had this he had this like decade of weirdness and all of a sudden, bam, championship contender every single year. Yep. Um I mean Eric, we the first year we did this podcast, he was the he was the champ. Mm -hmm. Um that was that season where he just took off with with that team and, and ever since then, I mean he went um he was in the championship four three straight years. Um, was uh, 
you know, almost won the title in 2021 if Larson doesn't um, win the pit, win the pit road battle. I mean, people forget how close that championship actually was at the right. time, but Truex was right there to win that title if uh, if if the five team doesn't make a incredible pit stop. So, um, very been very very close a couple of times, but also he's had a foot out the door for a while yeah. too. Um, but he's you know. Eric, he's done it all. Like, what's what's left, you know? Yeah, another uh, another driver on the resume of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yes, yep. You know? Probably the first, you know, basically the first one. Yeah, right? he was chance he two. Was, he was chance two and then uh, did a lot of driving for Dale and, and came up through the DEI program. and um, A lot of eye racing with Dale. Yeah, that. A lot of hunting in the woods with Dale. Yeah. They do a lot of that together, too. So. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had my love-hate with Martin oh, Truex same. Jr. over yep. the years. Yep. Um, but I mean, and then they've I, I have two separate podcasts. I heard him talk about this week. Do you remember him other than the Joey Logano thing? Do you remember him ever having a run in with somebody? Yeah, I heard about this on the teardown too. And, and uh, the only controversy I can ever remember with Martin, obviously there was the Richmond thing. Yeah, but that wasn't him. And it wasn't him. No, he was just involved. He just, in, he he just was, got screwed over on the deal. He was a bystander of it. Yeah. Um, the only other thing is, uh, is yeah, the Joey Logano thing where, and it wasn't really anything other than he just got beat. <laughs> right. I mean, that was really, that was really it. Joey, Joey kicked his butt. Um, that, that's the only thing I can even think of. Martin, Martin's very calculated, very cool and calm. Um, except when there's lap traffic in front of him and then he's screaming, uh, <laughs> on the radio, but, um, just, you know, I, I think too, Eric, similar to Kevin Harvick, respect of his peers, like that's hard to find. Um, I think that's something we're not going to have as much of along the way. Uh, you know, guys like him are going to become more and more rare, but you know, he's got, uh, he's got a legacy that he's leaving behind. That's for sure. I will say there is one other confrontation ish that everybody has forgotten about Martin Truex Jr. And it was 2005. Oh, you're going way back. In the NASCAR the Bush, Bush series. series. He got pinched on the backstretch by Mike Wallace. And remember, his car went up on the wall and he rode the wall all yes, the way around turn that. three and came down yep. off of it. Yep. I Spectacular that. crash. And he was pissed at Mike <laughs> Wallace afterwards. His quote, according to this ESPN article, I don't know. Maybe he's blind. It's just ridiculous. We don't need this stuff happening. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. He rode the wall. It was yeah, completely on his side. Walking he toward, so walking toward the track to the delight of fans, apparently stalking Wallace. Truex watched the entire field go by, but didn't see Wallace until he had diverted his attention to pit road. When he yeah. finally noticed Wallace going by, it was too late for him to do anything, but flip his finger in the air in the direction <laughs> of Wallace. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. He, uh, speaking of those Bush series, like that goes on his resume. Um, he was so dominant in the Bush series yeah. back then. I mean, back to back champions that, uh, that 20, that 2004 season, he was just lights out, just absolutely lights out. Yeah. Incredible um, career. Um, inches away from a Daytona 500 that, yeah. you know, um, will go down as one of the all time finishes in the Daytona 500 as well. Losing to Denny Hamlin. Yeah. Very, very close. Um, so James Small said this week, uh, the the decision every season on whether Martin's coming back or not, he called it distracting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably not wrong, but is that kind of a slap in the face to <sighs> his driver? I thought about that, but I don't know if Martin would disagree with that. Yeah. I don't know if he would disagree with that, Eric. I think he... I think he know. I think that, and I think that's why he's stepping away. I think he knows it's it's time. Well, I think he he's. Can't. I think he's stepping away because there's a really good driver available right now for that car. Really oh, good yeah. potential driver. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. And, um, I, I think that has more to do with it than anything. And you it's know, called he, it's called <laughs> crap or get off the pot is what it is. Well, yeah, and that's and that's what happened last year. I, that that's something I haven't heard talked about a lot this year or th this time around either. He went deep into last season mm -hmm. and not knowing what he was going to do. Yeah. 
Um, and, and that'll wear that'll wear on a team. I mean, we see that Eric. Yeah, but the Green Bay. So, and they the Green Bay Packers the, have this. Yeah, all the you know with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, like these. <laughs> you know, they mentioned it on DBC though, and I kind of agree with them. That is that is a Joe Gibbs issue. That is a sponsorship that's issue. issue. That's been an issue. But with no, them, but though. that's that's something they need to worry about. The crew chief's job is to make the car go fast. Yeah. Yep. So I don't I don't know. I I I thought this was a disservice to Truex. I think this is, you know, there's already questions about these two and how they get along because the way they talk on the radio and they've sat here and multiple, multiple times dismissed the the claims. Um, but then he makes a comment like this in the media and it's just, I don't know. I, I, I didn't like it. I, it's that, it's that poorly with me, just a bad yeah. time, bad timing to do it. I think. Well, there's a lot of that going around. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, <laughs> that's true. I, I don't we can talk yeah. more about that in a minute too. I, I don't think James and, and Martin have a bad relationship with each other. You know, I don't um, think so either. I think I think that I think that Martin can be prickly though. Well, I think I, I, I think they have a working I, relationship. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're going to be best buddies outside of the racetrack. No. Um, but it's yeah, it's definitely it's. But Martin, that's that's Martin's personality too. I think he I think he is a little bit prickly. Um, I, I saw and, an, saw an interview recently, James. And I know this isn't NASCAR related, but it kind of fits in here. Um, the the famous magician duo of Penn and Teller. They did an interview and they said they're not friends, <laughs> and people were shocked well, yeah. by that. It's like yeah. we're coworkers. We we've, we've worked together our whole lives, but we don't we don't go hang out. We're not friends. Yeah, like, I'm not your friend. Just because you're a coworker together. doesn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we hate each other off the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't talk all week long and message yeah. back and forth about stuff. Well, think about how many how many of your coworkers you're actually friends with. Probably. Right. Yeah. Like, no, it's true. Yeah, you don't have deep friendships with too many of your coworkers over the years. Right. You know, every once in a while. This is no but, different. Yeah. Exactly. I'm sure he's probably still friends with with Pern. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. He is friends with Dale Jr. Right. So that we know. Um. So most likely to fill the 19 seat, we're going to talk about this until an announcement is made, and word is an announcement could be coming pretty soon. Uh, Chase Briscoe is the favorite to fill this seat. What do we think of that move for? What do we think of that move for Chase? What do we think of that move for JGR? And do we think this is what's going to happen? I love this for chase i think it's good for everybody right i think so i think so and he brings a sponsor he's yeah. got good relationships um gonna lose that ford uh, <laughs> right lose that ford backing he's had um but no, you're, get, you're a getting a guy so we've we've i mentioned a couple weeks ago on here the talk is that it takes five years to learn this next learn in this series now yeah um because of the limited practice and all that well he's going he's he's I think fifth year next year or this year. I can't remember which Yeah, fifth year. Yeah. He started uh 2020. Um, yeah. Cause he came in before the next gen car. Yeah. So you're getting somebody who is now the, the training is done. He's ready to win. He's ready to compete. You're bringing a veteran into the seat and probably not real expensive veteran. That's right. You know, although chase said this weekend that he had, or said on serious today that he has multiple offers on the table. Um, and of course, until this is signed and announced, we he could go anywhere. Unless um, there are offers from Hendrick, it's uh, come on. <laughs> right? Yeah. Where else is he gonna go? Where else I mean, is better it, than JGR? It's it depends on what you want in life. Like, do you want to make money and be decent, or do you want to try to win a championship and build legacy? Like, the only the, thing I could see thing. keeping him away from JGR is if he wanted to go run other series because JGR doesn't let you do that. Yeah. Um, but I don't see Chase running a bunch of stuff. I mean, he runs a late model once in a while. That's about it. Yep. So I don't. Yep. I, I think he'd be willing to give that up to have a seat at JGR. So, yep. um, yeah, I think uh, I think this is it makes the most sense for everybody for for JGR. It's it's a brilliant move for Chase. Like you said, I mean, you're going to one of this the top two teams. It's it's one this of the top it. two teams in the sport. Yep. Where where else are you going to go? Yep. Yeah. He's already been with a top tier team at one point. And yeah, I know SHR has fallen off, but at one time that was a top tier team. Yeah. Um, he knows you know, the ins and outs and how that all works. Worked with Kevin Harvick. Yeah. Um, obviously that's, there's a good connection to Tony Stewart. I mean, drove for Gibbs yeah. as well. And there's a good relationship still there. Um, I, I heard this a long time ago and it always comes to fruition with it when it comes to Gibbs. 
Joe Gibbs is the New York Yankees. Mm -hmm. They do not care about driver development one bit. And the only, the only times they've ever tried developing drivers, it's failed. Uh, and we have one in progress with the last name Gibbs. <laughs> so um, that's the only other one. But you think about Joey Logano, that didn't work. Um, Daniel Suarez, that didn't work. They're not in they're not in the development business. They're in the superstar business. Yep. And Chase Briscoe has that. He has, we've seen the flashes of it. We mm-hmm. haven't seen it all there yet, but you can't, if you're Joe Gibbs racing, you can't go get Chase Elliott. You can't go get Kyle Larson. Um, you can't go get William Byron. Like those guys are locked in. What you can do is you can see the spark that's right out there that, like you said, Eric, he's got, he's got the resume started. Yeah. You can go get him and you can make him into a perennial winner. Uh, and, and I think if it, you know, we're going to learn everything we need to learn about Chase Briscoe in the next two years. If, if he goes to, to, to Joe Gibbs racing. Well, and, and yeah. you mentioned Joe Gibbs is the New York Yankees. We'll know in the next two years, because if he doesn't do what he needs to do, they'll boot him. He'll be out. Yeah. He'll be out. You know, yep. you, you don't, you don't last at JGR if you're not competing. Yep. And I know this upsets the Toyota pipeline, but that's the, that's the thing. Joe Gibbs doesn't care about the Toyota pipeline. Yeah, they want well, to win races and win championships. DBC hinted this week that uh, the Toyota pipeline, which right now probably at the top of it is Corey Heim, uh, people aren't very high on Corey Heim, and which is weird. I, I yeah. he can drive. Corey Heim can drive. Yeah. Chandler Smith can drive. Yeah, like those are I, I think very highly of those two drivers. Um, there's nowhere for them to go. Yep. <laughs> Especially if you're going to bring in an outside driver to come into the to the to the big seat. Yeah. We, you know, these JGR doesn't want a rookie in this, in the seat. They've got a, they've got a young driver right now in Ty Gibbs. They don't want a young driver in the seat. They want a veteran and they're getting yep. one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, there's other veterans out there. Yeah. But Kyle Bush. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, it, that, that's the thing. Like, where's the upside, you know, at some point you're, you know, all the pieces that you had mentioned, you know, cost sponsorship, um, Chase Briscoe, you don't have to worry as much about sponsorship with Chase Briscoe. He's got, you know, he's got, uh, he's got a strong backing. Yeah. Um, and he's got good personality. I think people mm. forget, I think people forget that too. I think he can, I think with, with JGR's help, he can do some good stuff over there. When, uh, when he dumped Denny Hamlin a couple years ago at Indy, do you ever think they'd be teammates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I didn't think, well, Back then, I thought he'd be driving the 14 car for the next decade. Yeah, so, um, that's true. You know, things change awful quickly. Yeah, uh, but that, that's a good point too, Eric. He's got that dog in him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, people forget how good he was in the Xfinity series. I mean, he went toe to toe with Kyle Busch at Darlington. That really put him on the map. Yeah, um, and then he's had some good run-ins in the Cup series from time to time. So, yeah, I love this move for him. I hope he. I hope they get it done. Honestly, I'd I'd be. Comp- completely happy with him getting at getting that seat there were rumors that they would bring the 18 back for this car um however bob pockris said that his belief is that the 18 is being held for ty gibbs if ty gibbs wants it uh which he doesn't think he does but if he does that it's for him so we'll see we'll see what happens with it i don't see any reason to change the number personally but uh yeah who knows um but speaking of the 18 and kyle bush as we mentioned already <laughs> Uh, made himself some news this week because there were some rumors going around that he potentially was in talks to take his seat back at Gibbs. Um, first of all, makes no sense at all. Um, I don't know what is, what would have changed from two years ago to today. Um, you know, they didn't have sponsorship to put Kyle in the car. Then I don't know that they got sponsorship to put Kyle in the car. Now, um, Kyle's expensive. He's going to be very expensive. Maybe cheaper now than he was when he left, but still expensive. Um, but Kyle made it interesting by name dropping Hendrick as well. And I wanted to get your take on this, James. So I Ky- want, yeah, I want to talk about this. Yeah. yeah, Kyle says that basically if Gibbs comes calling or Hendrick comes calling, he'd be interested in going driving over there. But right now he's committed to RCR and, and building that team up. So what are your mm-hmm. thoughts on Kyle's comments and uh yeah, what do you, what do you got on this? Well, this is interesting. Yeah, um, Kyle's definitely 
what the the honeymoon phase with RCR is is dead. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're full blown in marriage mode mm-hmm. <laughs> at this point, and Kyle's not happy. He no. is not. He is not happy. He's not winning. Um, that being said, Kyle says things with his mouth that a lot of drivers just keep internalized. Mm-hmm. And I would be willing to venture a guess that every driver in that garage area, if you said, hey, Hendrick or Gibbs, you want one of those seats? Uh, everybody in the garage is saying yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a problem with what Kyle thinks because it's obvious it's the fact that he put his team in that situation now and he's already PO'd um, with the situation he's in. Uh, I, I, it's just a bad look for him. And like you chose to go there, man, you had other options. Um, You know, you're, you're kind of stuck until that contract runs out. And that's basically what he said, but, well, you know, you know, you know, what reality. I, you know what I think this was about? What's I think that? I think this was more than Kyle Busch isn't Denny Hamlin level savvy with his words. No, he is not. But I think this is a Denny Hamlin type move. This is go on. Go on. So Kyle has my, under, seed. my understanding is that Kyle has a no talk clause in his contract. Yes, I saw that. He cannot that talk to anybody else. So what better way to tell people that you're interested than to tell people you're interested? <laughs> well, and that's the thing, right? Come get me. Yeah. That's what this is. This is okay. I'm under contract the rest of this year. Um, and, and next year. And next year. <laughs> Cause they picked up his option. Right. But come with some money, put some money together, come buy me yeah. out or, or, or come get me. And when, when that year's over, who 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 is putting together the deals for Kyle Bush? Because that's a problem, right? Yeah. That's a problem right there. Why would you give if you're Kyle Bush, multi multi time champion, one of the best ever? Like we can all agree Kyle Bush is a top ten oh, yeah. driver all time. Yeah. Why does a team have an option on him? That should not ever be the case. Kyle Bush should a hundred percent of the time be able to negotiate his own way. Yeah. However, however he wants it. He should never not have the power. Kyle, and Kyle famously lost his ride at our, at uh Hendrick because of who was negotiating for him. So. And that's the thing. Like the whole Gibbs thing was a debacle from the start. And we, we yeah. hashed that out over that entire season. What in the hell is going on with Kyle Bush? And why can't you get something done unless you don't want him? Yep. And now it's like, well, RCR definitely wants him enough to the fact that they picked up his team option because they're not going to let him go. Um, but he don't want to be there. Right. So yeah, there we're, uh, this could get messier than, um, I, let's just let, this is, this is only the start of this. Yeah. This whole thing's <laughs> not going to go away. Yeah. And that team can't be happy. Like, what if you're the guys on that team? You know, yeah, he came to work with you. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. If I was Childers, I'd be pissed. Well, he's been pissed at Kyle before that right. I stopped him. <laughs> <laughs> you're Austin Dillon, you're probably pissed because all the good stuff's going to the A car, not yours. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he's definitely the odd man out over there. He's always been, that fit has always been oil and water a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were winning last year, so it kind of camouflaged some of that. Right. And you don't see it. Then when you get you get your ass kicked a little bit, you start to see what people have Figur- going figuratively on. Figuratively and literally, right? Yes. He's <laughs> getting his ass kicked many, many places right now. <laughs> on and off the track. Yeah. So, yeah, really interesting move, though, Eric. I... Uh, I agree with you 100%. It was a strategic move by Kyle Busch. The the problem is is he should he he's playing checkers not chess. Right. He should have the, he should have been playing these moves years ago. Yeah, and I I mean I, honestly, I don't see him going back to JGR. I don't see any way that that works. Um and man, I mean he kind of he kind of pooched the finish line of his career. Yeah. A little bit yeah, here. I think so. It's kind of withering away now. We're seeing it. It sucks. Yeah, it does. Hendrick's not going to come calling. Who they? Who no. are you kicking out? Well, hold on. 
You think Bowman's going? We've been, we've been saying Bowman's going for years. I hit I hit pause on myself <laughs> because if I was running Hendrick, I'd talk to I'd. Let me just say this. If I was Mr. Hendrick, I'd call up Richard and I'd say, Richard, let's have a meeting. Let's have lunch. Richard, let's have lunch. Do a trade. Take. Yeah. Yeah. Let me remind you, Alex Bowman finished eighth this weekend. Well, yeah, he finishes eighth a lot. (laughs) Well, where'd Kyle Busch finish? (laughs) That's again. The problem is the ally sponsorship. Ally likes Alex Bowman, so it's tough to. But maybe that's what. But. Throw that in the trade. Listen, Richard, take <laughs> Ally with you. And this would never happen. I, no. I really wish NASCAR worked this way, by the way. I wish you could just do trades. And so I think it'd be a hell of a lot of fun. Right. Um, but hear me out. Listen, Richard, you get Ally and Alex Bowman to drive the eight and give me Kyle Busch straight up. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Well, Hendrick's already signing the checks on Kyle Larson. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, both Kyles. Bring there both Kyles in. Yeah. They're getting enough Napa money. They'll be fine. Right. <laughs> I tell you what, Rick, Rick is not losing any money on that Larson deal. No. If they had $3 million to spend on that whole double debacle, um, that yeah, Hendrick's not losing money on that. <laughs> they ain't losing money on that guy. Um, let's do kind of rapid fire through some silly season rumors. Let's knock it uh, out. We'll do one at a time and just quick comments on it. Uh, these are rumors. Most of these were from DBC this week, but, um, hearing them elsewhere as well. Yeah. Uh, rumor, Josh Berry, Cole Custer to front row motorsports, uh, for next season. What are your thoughts? As long as you get, uh, Rodney. Yeah. With, well, uh, and, with Josh. and Josh and Rodney want to go together. So I love that by the way. I yeah. love that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. I think there's an upside with those two. Um, Cole Custer. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't surprise me to see him get another shot, but it's not like he's setting worlds on fire in Xfinity. Then again, well, I mean, he won the championship. <laughs> yeah. But then again, I mean, what is I know. it? What I is, know what you mean, though. What is it? Not that I disagree with you, yeah. by the way. Well, yeah. what does Xfinity matter anyway? It doesn't because they're now so when different. You're Cole Custer and you went back down. Right. It's yeah. Uh, Noah Gregson to a third RCR car. Uh, bringing bringing Bass Pro with uh, extra money from them because they're going to likely leave JGR. You know, Noah was being flown. Now we know the Chase Briscoe thing is hot. Like, right. That's 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 in the works. Uh, there was that rumor that Noah would be a good fit at the 19 because they could keep the Bass Pro thing going. Right. Um, but Bass Pro has a good relationship with Richard as well. Um, who knows, man? Maybe maybe Richard will drop that option. <laughs> right. Bring in Noah Gregson. Well, I mean. Who would you rather have, Austin Dillon or Noah Gregson? I know this wouldn't happen either. That's really tough, actually. It's actually tougher than it should be. Yeah, because Austin has won. He's won big races, too. And is is Austin... He's been terrible for two years. But is Austin the problem at RCR, or is RCR the problem at RCR? At what point... Okay, well, let's do it. At what point... We can't let Austin have a free pass. Right. I know RCR is bad, but he's... I mean, he's not doing himself any favors. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I don't know. I mean. I like Noah over there. Yeah. Why not? I could see. I mean, it definitely. He fit I, in with that culture over there. I feel like the culture is good. I just wish RCR was better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. Because I, I fear that Noah goes over there and he's irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want that. No. He's no. Not I mean, here's, right now. here's a guy with the resurgence right now after yeah. a terrible rookie year. Where does he? Where could he go? Where he could keep some of that momentum going, though. That's the other thing. I mean, third car at twenty three eleven. They would they want him? I don't Corey know. Heim would, Corey Heim would get that seat, wouldn't he? I don't know. Maybe not now, though. That's the other thing. Third car at RFK. Brad's not doing that, though. We no. know that. Brad said he's thirty million short, <laughs> so he's not. He's not buying a charter. Um, Dale Jr. said this week that that ship sailed. Yeah, track house isn't happening. Track house has their track lineup. house has too many people. The track house is worse than Toyota as far as the pipeline oh. right now. We're going to talk about Justin Haley. Um, if Justin Haley doesn't go to Wood Brothers, Noah to Wood Brothers actually would be a pretty nice. Yeah, because you keep get him in the Penske pipeline there. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, the rumor is Justin Haley's going to Wood Brothers. Um. They I don't should know. do that. I, the Wood Brothers should do that. Yeah. Now. Justin Haley is. If I was any team, I would make a. If I was a team like that, I would make a call to Justin Haley now. Yeah. 
what he's doing with that Rick Ware stuff is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the Rick, Rick Ware stuff, their stuff up, but obviously Justin Haley's got some skill. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, we, Call, we've been here hit and miss on him, but he's showing it. Probably right now. letting him get away. Uh, well, probably didn't have a choice. Yeah. He's too good for them, honestly. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I thought he was making a mistake, but. Colleague right now. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. Yeah. Colleague's in trouble. Yeah. They they might, they might not be selling this year, James, but I feel like the writing's on the wall. And, and here's the thing too, with Wood Brothers, Har Harrison Burton's got a, Harrison Burton has to start over. And I don't know if it's doing the John Hunter Nemechek and going all the way back to trucks and rebuilding from the ground up, but he's, he is completely toast yeah. at Wood Brothers. He yeah. He has it. done nothing. He ha he does not have it. Nope. And that team, that team should not be same thing. We said with Austin Dillon, that team should not be that bad. No, no, not with that's Penske a, support. That's a top 15 on a, on most weekends car. If you walk into the Penske shop, that car's sitting in it. That yeah, that car should threaten for a win from time to time. Yeah. Like, you know, if it's, let me, I'll, I'll rephrase that. If circumstances are right, that car should be, that car should be in position to compete for something from time to time because yeah. you can't compete for wins or even have a chance at top tens when you're in 30th all the time. Right. That car is not, that car should not be 30th place. Yeah. That car is more, more irrelevant now than it's ever been with, with Harrison I, Burton in the car. I, I would love to see honestly, and this is probably bad. I would like to see the Wood brothers move Harrison now and yeah. see what they've got for the rest of the year. Cause yeah. it's done. It's done. That's done. Yeah. And if he wins a, if he wins a super speedway race, <laughs> right. cl clip this audio. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the only thing that saves him, right? Yeah. That's the only thing that, and he's not, I don't even know. I don't even know if a win would save him at yeah. this point. He's got, I'm with you. Uh, unless they show performance week in and week out. He's right. He's got to have. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can win a speedway race. We know that, but man, he's not even in the hunt anywhere. Yeah. So, there you go. Those are our rumors for a uh, silly season at the moment. There you go. Um, any other news we missed, James? Not much. All right. Grillo's Pickles will be on Todd Gilliland's car. There you go. That's, I that's big to, news. I just wanted to say Grillo's Pickles. That's big news. Uh, Zepp is with Chase Briscoe. I saw that. That's an interesting Ooh, looking William car. William Byron's going to be doing a cars event for JR Motorsports? It's in the notes. Oh, okay. Short track corner, but that's okay. We can talk about it. Oh, sorry. I, did, I didn't <laughs> scroll down that far. That car looks great, by the way. Yeah, I didn't see the car, but uh, yeah, he's oh. going to, he's hooking up with JRM uh, and uh, running the cars to a race. Caraway well, Speedway, July 3rd. Do short track corner. Let's go. I already keyed you up. <laughs> All I right. Bet. We'll jump ahead of the checkered flags. We'll do short track corner. Um, real quick, uh, Bubba Pollard beat Eric Jones and Blake Rowe uh, to win the Money in the Bank 150 at Berlin Raceway uh, last week. Heck of a race. Great battle at the end. It was an awesome race. <laughs> really I good watched race. it on the, on, uh, I saw the, uh, I saw the replay. It was awesome. Nice. Nice. I thought Eric was going to get it done, but I think, uh, I think he did some damage to that right front tire and he kind of faded. Yep. Um, but I mean, that's how good the racing was though. Yeah. Really good. The racing was really good. Blake Rowe, man. He's, uh, he's an up and comer. He's going to be something in the late models. He's Ber yeah. He got Berlin's the wins at Jags earlier true. in the season too. And yep. yeah. Um, yeah, Berlin's always a great race. Great track. We need the truck series there, man. We really need the truck series there. If they can put the wall on the back stretch, they'll make it happen, I bet. I, I want to keep... The, don't put the wall on the back stretch. You ruin that track if you put the wall on the back stretch. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, um, 40 late models registered tomorrow night for the second annual Bob Finley Memorial at Owasso Speedway. Uh, wedge super late models. Um, I'll be out there tomorrow night. Uh, Brave and Heat to watch that. A uh, bunch of modifieds are going to be there as well. Big show. Um, Midweek show. We'll see how it does. Um, went out there uh, last Saturday and watched some racing out there as well. That place, man, again, if you're in Michigan, you're looking for a good short track, go to Owasso Speedway. They're doing some great stuff out there, and they've got big plans. They're putting 8,000 seats in on the back stretch uh, in the off season, and then they're going to tear the front stretch hands down and rebuild those. Um, they're going to have seating just about all the way around that place when they're done with it. It's it's incredible. Awesome, man. They're gonna they're building a restaurant on site, all this stuff. I mean, it's, it's insane. The, the, the entire, like, if you haven't been there, in a while the whole infield is concrete now um there's concrete literally wrapping around the outside the entire pit area is concrete now uh they're building a big old tech barn um it's just incredible big big stuff happening out there rex wheeler doing a great job at owasso speedway got that money got that money man <laughs> uh amazing what somebody who loves racing with money can do right 
Yeah. That's awesome. And they got a turnout, man. They had over 100 cars this weekend, and they didn't have a class with less than 20 cars in it uh, this past weekend. So um, great show. But a uh, little bummer. They had uh, the last two races of the night ran out of the, the features ended before the race ended because they hit the time limit. Um, their truck series feature, the last feature of the night, uh, made eight laps of 25. <laughs> oh, bummer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So lots of lots of oil downs. It was a hot night. It was the first hot night of the year out there, and there were people blowing motors. So um, got to get that tuning right when it's hot. Um, the Van Dorn 125 at Flat Rock Speedway is this Saturday for the C- Jeg CRA uh, All-Star Tour. Um, the ASA uh, Stars Tour. No, the ASA Super Series is running this weekend as well at, at, uh, at Flat Rock. So a big doubleheader show on Saturday night out there. I'll be out there getting pictures of that. Uh, and you mentioned the William Byron race and the JRM and the Cars Tour at Caraway Speedway, July 3rd. There's your short track corner for the week. HendrickCars.com, number 24. Yes, so sir. You know, what that, you know what that scheme looks like. Yep. But, oh, it just looks good on a, on a late model. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yep. I wish the Cars Tour raced around here. I, I like that series. Well, give Kevin Harvick a call. And Dale yeah. Jr., you know, get up there. Get it up to Berlin or Wasso, man. Oh, they would be great at Berlin. They would be. And, and Wasso. Yeah. And Wasso, yeah. Uh, checkered flags this week. You got any, James? Um, yeah, I sent this to you a little earlier, but I wanted to use it for checkered flags. Jeff Striegel nominated to the Michigan Motorsports Hall of Fame. Good I saw one. Saw that from his son Kevin. Good one. And we know Jeff Striegel, obviously, uh, from the radio, but uh, people in Michigan know him as the guy who runs Berlin. So, yep. Um, got a chance to kind of be in his orbit and watch him do his thing when we were at SRX last year, and he 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 runs that place, man. Yeah, he does. Got his fingerprints all over it, so he's doing a great job. He did a great job. So they uh, Flow Racing gave the microphone to Carson Hosevar, um, who raced at the Money yes, at the he, Bank. Yes, they and did. And Carson Hosevar went around interviewing people and uh, interviewing drivers and came across uh, Jeff Striegel, and Striegel just snatched the microphone from him and started interviewing him. It was it was pretty good. Just absolute professional, man. He's the best in the business. Yeah. Um, very, very cool. You know, um, it was uh, – um, who was the, the guy who just passed away from – Barney Hall, you know, Barney Hall Hall was such a voice with MRN. And I think Jeff Striegel is making himself a legacy like Barney Hall did Um, doing a great job at MRN. He's he's definitely the voice of MRN right now. So very cool. Very cool. Um, My checkered flag, James, I got two. Uh, I wanted to give one to Mike Kelly, the crew chief for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. This weekend um, who left Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Out uh, on a strategy move to trap a bunch of cars a lap down. And it was amazing. (laughs) It was yeah. so cool. Um, very cool. I mean, there were only a few laps left to go on the stage. So, I mean, it was a winning move no matter what. Yes, sir. The, why not get rid of the competition? And that's what they did and uh, screwed yeah. up everybody else's day. But that's what you got to do, man. And got a yep. got a top five finish out of it. So um, yep. good job for Mike Kelly over there. And my other one is a uh, friend of the show, longtime friend of the show, uh, Todd Henry Jr., former co-worker at ah, yes. uh, Tri-City Motor Speedway. I knew this was going to be on there. Yep. It's his birthday today, so happy birthday, Todd. He, he's the first one. When I post the episode, it hits Twitter, and I immediately I get a notification that he liked it or retweeted it. So um, big thanks to Todd for supporting the show all these years sure. and uh, and being a good friend as well. So um, he'll probably listen to this at some point on the way to New Hampshire. <laughs> And uh, if, <laughs> yeah. I, if he's going out there, I'm not sure he's, if he's in New Hampshire this weekend or not, but um, we'll, we'll get him. I'm not going to tell him I did it. We'll just we'll get the message when he hears it. So, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, how about black flags this week, James? Any black flags for you? Um, this is kind of like a checkered and black flag at the same time. Okay. But NB- NBC's coverage was so good <laughs> that you just have to, like, retroactively throw a black flag at Fox Sports. <laughs> I Eric. almost didn't miss Dale Jr. Oh, my God. Oh, it did. Yeah, Dale Jr. Actually, honestly, I'm not going to. I I, won't, I don't want to say I did. he didn't matter, but the coverage was so good. <laughs> they did a great job. I mean, Eric, there was there was a triple box. Yeah. Of great racing. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yes, this is what we've missed. This is it. This yeah, is they did. An, need. <laughs> they did an awesome job. Um, yeah, just all around. You know, I, I have given Rick Allen crap um, on this podcast before. I, it really sucks. And I hope he's, I hope he's part of the decision process to do this, but it really sucks that he's getting pulled from the booth because he does do a great job. He's not, he's not Mike joy. He's not Alan Bestwick, but he does do a great job. Um, so it sucks that he's gonna get pulled for, uh, 
for Lee Diffie during the playoffs. But Lee Diffie's awesome. So, yes, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. At least Rick Allen still gets to do the Xfinity Series. But it sucks. I, I mean, I feel bad for him. Um, I hope it's not. I hope it's not truly a demotion and that he's part of the decision with that process. But um, yeah, they just did a great job this weekend. Uh, Steve Letarte having half a voice probably helped um, because he didn't yell at me at all this weekend. Yeah. (laughs) So if now if Jeff Burton would lose his voice, we'd be good. Um, But uh, no, I they just a terrific job. I love their crew. I love I love everything they do. Um, The uh, the the way that they try to push boundaries to and cover races differently, having the pit reporters on the pit box with a team for the second stage was really neat. Yeah. And I, I just love that, that they're willing to try different things and do different things. Um, a real interview with a pit crew member, by yeah. the way. Yeah, right. Um, that was good. I haven't had so, that in years. I, I feel like I used my black flag for a positive. For right. Once. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I kind of wish that we'd take Jeff Burton out of the booth and put Dale Jarrett up there because Dale Jarrett did great during the Xfinity race. And I mean his dad did it for years and I like Dale in the booth. I think Dale does a really good job, but yeah, Dale's been good for years. Yeah. They got a good crew. I mean, it, Oh yeah, they're good, man. I mean, he's got a good crew. Nothing against Jeff Burton either. He just yells, but he's, he does a good job too. So yep. Good, good, good. I deal. disagreed with him uh, at some point during the race and I yelled, I yelled, <laughs> uh, damn it, Jeff at one point. <laughs> that was, Oh, I think it was the Larson and Suarez thing. Cause NBC made it a point to be like, well, Larson, it's his fault. And I'm like, yeah. no, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jeff Burton has won many races in the Cup Series. He's, you know, probably going to end up in the Hall of Fame someday. No, <laughs> I disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, it's good. Um, my black flag is sort of Fox related as well. Uh, mine goes to Kevin Harvick because yeah. earlier yeah. this week, Kevin Harvick called the partial repave at Iowa the biggest f up of the year uh, by NASCAR, and he yeah, was he wrong. Yeah. One thousand well, percent wrong. Now, so yeah, people yep. forget. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. I love you, but you get the black flag this week for sure. This cause... podcast is always pretty fun. Like I see the, um, I see the clips of it. And, yeah, I have uh, not listened to always... an episode, but their clips are great. They do a good yeah. job. It does the same thing they do with Dale Jr. and they get the clips out there. Yep. So you get you get the you get the good stuff. Yeah. Then they they put nice long clips out too. They're long enough to where you can sit down and watch it for a few minutes, but you aren't feeling like you got to watch an entire hour and a half episode. So they do a good job. Yep. Good podcast. Yep. I, I'll listen to Harvick talk all day long. Oh yeah, he's even good. even he's if great. he is wrong. Yeah, he's great at it. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. And he doesn't. Wait till he's fast. calling IndyCar. Wait till he's calling IndyCar races next year. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about that. IndyCar all on Fox. Big yeah. Fox the whole year. Yeah, and NASCAR's not going to be on Big Fox during their part of the Fox. Definitely mad at NASCAR. I... Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, that doesn't sit well for me. I know. You, I know. Apparently, whoever's negotiating. NASCAR's TV contract, same person negotiating Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch's guy, yeah. Yep. What yep. the hell? Darn it. Yeah, there's that. There's a black flag for you, too. Another one for Fox. Yeah. There you go, Fox. Yeah. You can have your Indy car, and you can screw up the Indy 500. Go ahead. Bring bring back Jackass Corner. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was one of my better ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's... Uh, should we pluck? I, I I have fantasy league after preview New Hampshire. Do we want to preview it before or after? Uh, we'll we'll do it after. So let's, yeah. let's preview New Hampshire. New Hampshire Motor Speedway this weekend. Uh, NASCAR Cup Series on Sunday, two thirty p.m. Eastern. The USA Today three oh one. Um, Saturday, the NASCAR Xfinity Series has the Psy Apps two two hundred. Uh, three thirty p.m. Eastern. Truck Series still off. Um, I'm sure there's probably K N Series or, or whatever the the Pinty series and modifieds and probably six modified races and motorcycle races and late model. They run usually about like 50 races at New Hampshire Mm -hmm. during the weekend there. So lots of racing. I'm sure if you're going to New Hampshire motor speedway this weekend, I won't tell you what the forecast looks like from looking at it ahead of time. So um, let's just hope that it's wrong. Uh, But we get to make our picks this week, James, and I get to go first and I'm going to make it real easy. Uh, I'm going forward and I'm going Josh Berry as my pick Ooh, this weekend good. in New Hampshire. Yep. That's a great one. It's a great one. I was actually thinking Jolo, uh, but no. I thought about him, but I picked him last week and I'm like, I'm not going to pick him two weeks in a row. I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick a, a guy who's in the news. Martin Truex Jr. There you go. He has been You're picking, picking a Toyota after you just said, yeah, Toyota's I'd be out to I lunch. Know. I know. I know. I know. No, I know <laughs> what I'm doing. Trust me. <laughs> 
No, he's been so. Just for the record, uh, I was looking at the last two starts at New Hampshire. Um, Martin Truex Jr. <laughs> this is great. This is a great stat. So in the next gen era, let's let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Next gen cars. Um, second place on the laps led list is uh, 43 laps led by Christopher Bell. And he is almost 400 laps behind Martin Truex Jr. <laughs> with 426 laps led in the next gen era with uh at new hampshire so i'll take martin Truex jr i'm just gonna ride i'm gonna ride that history uh and see if i can't get a get a win out of it so well i'm going that kevin harvick's usually decent here um yeah eric almarola has been excellent here uh so hopefully that stewart those stewart Haas notes are there josh, for josh barry josh barry will be featured again in my fantasy lineup again this week yeah so yeah uh speaking of that how'd fantasy go for you this week oh eric what a day <laughs> what a day in the cornfields of iowa <laughs> as smoky come back gets the win third win of the season for james yes uh, when Kyle Larson crashed, I was for, for sure I thought I was in trouble, but yeah. no. I, mean, I think everybody had Kyle Larson, so you I were think lucky. everybody did have Kyle Larson, so I get the win. Um, Smoking Grill Racing second, Hendrick Flair tie uh, third. Eric, you were tied for fourth, so I'll throw you in there. You're one point out of the podium. Uh, more importantly, Watermelon James takes a huge defeat <laughs> uh, as he finishes ninth. So I get my one-on-one win. Uh, overall standings, not much changed there. Smoking Grill Racing. Uh, is first team Justin second Cole Custer's last stand third uh, Eric we are still sixth and seventh I would say we're not not out of this yet you're 101 points behind me on the season but other than that I think the I think the top I would say the top nine aren't out of this uh, Baron's still top I don't know we're fairly close yeah we're fairly close. I had one point in this race where the top four drivers were all my drivers, and then I had Noah Gregson who was back midfield. Yeah, I had. Yeah, I had a really. I was feeling really good about my lineup. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna ride Larson. He's coming through the field, and start of stage three happened, and he wrecked, and I was like, God dang it, dude, another, another week. Because I I won all of the, uh, I won all of the the one on one matchups as well. So I had those forty bonus points. And then when Larson wrecked, I lost those ten points. I was furious i uh it happened again yeah when i again. so when i had that i looked at the standings and i was seventh it's like are you freaking kidding me how am i <laughs> seventh when i have four of the top <laughs> like my four drivers are top four yeah jesus i i, I hate fantasy fantasy stupid I it's i yeah it's frustrating <laughs> i was so frustrated and then i saw the results at the end of the race I'm like oh that's a good day <laughs> You jerk. I'll take you jerk. <laughs> at least I, I like, remember I to make that. my I made my picks the day early this week I was not forgetting again <laughs> yeah 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 that's good uh, James where can people hit you up during the week if they want to reach out to you at James Kush on Twitter you can find me at T super speedway on Twitter you can find the podcast on Facebook facebook.com slash the super speedway our website is the super speedway.com you can find uh, the podcast and Apple podcast Spotify YouTube Amazon music audible and iHeart radio uh, wherever you find us today, please subscribe and continue to listen for new episodes each and every week. Uh, and if you go to anchor.fm slash the super speedway, you can leave an, uh, leave us an audio message and we might just play it on the show. Uh, NASCAR cup series in action uh, this weekend and Sunday at New Hampshire motor speedway. It is the USA today, three Oh one uh, Xfinity series, the Cy apps 200 on Saturday at three 30. Uh, we'll be back next week to break it all down until then, everybody let's go racing. Uh-huh.